Hi guys, this is Jason Zack from Nathaniel School of Music. Uh, hope you guys are doing well. I'm uh, I'm with Blessing Chimanga all the way from Zimbabwe, an amazing musician who has his band who perform all over the world. They have a new album as well. There's going to be a link to their channel and the album in the description where you can pick it up. And uh, usually I do lessons on our YouTube channel or play these riffs, but. Uh, we are uh, since he's here and he has a lot of pearls of wisdom around him uh, i figured i will ask him and try and tap his brain a little bit for you guys and this will be a great insight for those of you who are new to music who are even established musicians part of a band or anyone who's a musician so uh, first of all i'd just like to talk about blessings journey as an artist how did you start i mean you've had a very diff different career you play an instrument which none of us in india <laughs> seem to have a clue about but it sounds special uh, and w how how do people generally come up in zimbabwe uh, growing up i mean do you do you have schools or do you have a kind of a a general culture where you just learn from each other well thank you jason for having me thank you nathania for hosting me i'm so excited to be here um worst of all to be in your home and studio wow. um my journey I, I i i believe i grew up i i just came out as a musician however i went to a primary school i did the normal you know preschool first went to primary school in primary school i started playing the normal drum you know uh, because you got assemblies and you have to sing uh but in our primary school we didn't have a piano player so it was the drum that's more like the accompaniment and uh from there i just grew up uh, grew a, an interest in it by just playing the basic rhythm then my actual journey started in church. So I grew okay. up in a very Christian family. Uh, you know, we were in church every other day. And right. I would see the drama playing and I'm like, one day I want to play drums. One day I want to play drums. And uh, I started playing teens at home. Okay. I, I hope one day I'll show you okay. a, a picture of me playing like empty teens, you yeah. know? Yeah. And uh, from there, that's when I was like, you know, one day when I'm given the opportunity, I'll play. I played drums one service when the drama didn't come to church. From there, I went to a high school that had music as a subject. So what kind of pushes you to kind of do it? You know, because a lot of young uh, kids, at least from India, initially the parents kind of force the kids at a mm. young age to kind of do these grade exams we have these things called grade exams yeah, yeah. so i'm wondering in your case you just had that urge to play drums you had that passion to as you said play yeah. tin cans yeah, yeah. you know you just wanted to do it i just wanted to do it i can't actually say that there was a push because when i then decided to take it professional i was in trouble with my family okay so the push was just within me i guess that um i had I, I'm so grateful that I I I, I got that feeling yeah, and I yeah. accepted that this is what I wanted to. So how did you go from like a, a young passionate drummer into like a pro? Like you obviously had to tell your parents something yeah, and how yeah. did the whole process? Well, I'll be honest, buddy. It was a difficult process to tell my mother that I'm choosing music over yeah. everything else. My mom yeah. thinks I'm so confident enough to be a lawyer and not a musician, but this was what I wanted. Anyway, the high school I went to because we did music as a subject, um, wow. that helped me a lot because I was always excelling on that particular subject. And then it's in that high school that most of the Zimbabwean um, musicians have been chosen by artists. So two of the great musicians then saw me when I was playing in that school band and they're like, as soon as you finish school, boy, we are taking you. I had the privilege of playing with a guy called Oliver Mtuguzi who was the biggest, who right now late, but the biggest star of Zimbabwe. And his son and okay. me were best friends. So it's oh, his wow. son who really actually pushed me into the professional world to say, no, come, come, you know, because obviously professionalism was in their house. And from there I started playing for, I don't know. Awesome. So if you can just highlight in the school scenario, because wh why I'm trying to stress on that is in India, uh, in the whole of India, there is no professional music taught in schools. Mm -hmm. Music is just something like you get an external musician to come and do a few workshops right. and students will perform here and there at some prize days or functions here and there or you know how how did that mu how uh, just to enlighten us in India right like how is music ingrained into youngsters at a at this insanely young age where I guess, from that time in life, you really need to choose and the, the profession gets more and more 
in, ingrained into your Indeed, head. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, we it's 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 not every school in Zimbabwe. I okay. want to be very honest with you. All the other schools have you know music as in general. So you're gonna sing a song in in your class, and you're gonna go for choir as a class, and you're gonna be taught what Dore Mi Fa So is. But in this particular school called Prince Edward School that I went to, music was actually a subject. Wow. Which at um, so, so we you have, have six marks and yes, stuff. Yes. Yes. Okay. So out of six years, from the third year onwards, you can choose to take music as one of your subjects. And wow. that's what I did. So in there, you are taught to listen to different genres. You go to the library and you listen to jazz and you listen to swing and blah, blah, blah. You actually write the grading music exams from grade one up to eight. So in the three years, if you're really passionate, you're able to actually write grade one up to eight, which is wow. the, for the instrument that you have chosen. But yeah. at the same time, also music becomes an extra curriculum that you do after school. And that is the biggest thing in Zimbabwe. So okay. you've got your marimba bands, you've got your jazz bands, you've got your mbira bands, you've got your singing bands and at that school it's a rule that every child yeah. has to do music as one of their curriculum. Wow. So that has shaped that sometimes you don't know that you want to yeah. be a musician and it's when you are in those spaces every other day that you then find your passion. Awesome, thanks. So yeah. l let's talk a bit about your music now. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess you've been doing the band, the Blessing Chamanga band, mm -hmm. uh, for a few years now. What What is your general vibe? Like, how do you go about the writing process of a song? Like, how does it start? How do you collaborate? How do you find the right musicians? And then when you all, when you actually get together, how do you make your own sound what you had in your head, I guess, you know, while having a shower or wherever, <laughs> you had some vision. How do you, like, get that out? You guys have been touring the world now, mm. and it's incredible. So if you can give us an insight on how you take a, an idea, I'm guessing your song would yeah. start with some kind of yeah. an idea. Yeah. How do you take that and make it into what you guys do with dancing, with harmonies, with, like, and you guys dance and play, which yeah. none of us can do. <laughs> you dance. Yeah, for those of you who don't know uh, so much about his band, uh, we have links in the description. You should check it out. There are videos and he can sing like a normal singer and dance and play the marimba, which is a really, really physical instrument. And yeah, you, he should talk about his uh, fitness routine also <laughs> later. But anyway. I yeah. think uh, the writing process for me is very unique from every from, from many of the artists. I don't write on the paper. So I don't sit down wow. and say, the song I'm about to write is called Flowers. So f my chorus is going to be like this. Most of the time for me, I hear melodies in my head and I hear a line you know it could be a bass line it so could it's be the a, tune first yeah, for me it's the tune it's, it's that melody and how I know it's mine is if I listen if I hear it I sing it over and over again yeah. and if I sleep and wake up singing that same line it's mine you it's, don't it's, like record it no. and back it up. What now, if you forget? now in the days of technology, I'm yeah. now doing that. Okay. But before that, from my first album of 2015, yeah. I would as long as I sleep and wake up singing that melody. That's it. It's mine. So if you remember the melody when you wake up, it's yours. It's mine. It's mine. And from there, um, I've had the privilege of working with one crazy musician called Elisha Simbeva. He's my keyboard player. Wow. And I'm Tell that... me a bit about him. Elisha is a keyboard player. He's, he's really mostly a jazz player. But, but working with me, I've, I've, I've helped him in opening even more things inside of him. Elisha has a gift of taking that melody line and developing the band, structure. the structure, um, which I can still do. And for many years, I used to do that for myself. But you know, sometimes when you have a second mind, you get to hear and see things even differently. So I've entrusted him with my music and the composition side. So I come with, this is the melody I'm hearing. What should we do? And he says, okay, let me put chords to it. And most of my um, work, because of the playing of the marimba, yeah. it's, it's normally in, one four five because I've got yep. CFG on my marimba, and it's him who starts to put the extensions and uh, making it at least you know so that every song doesn't sound the same, yep. and and then from there we normally develop the bass line. And for African music, West of all Zimbabwean music, the bass is a pivotal instrument wow. in the in the body in in the tightness so of when it. you're singing the melody. Are you like also thinking of those other elements? I am, I am, okay. and and normally after the melody for me it's the bass. So wow. Elisha has been obviously the brought the chord work in. Yeah. I brought the bass, but because yeah. I'm a drummer, by the time I'm done with the bass player, I know exactly what drum groove I yes. want. And I think for me, I've been one of the difficult musicians to work with in the country because you come to my band, I tell you what to play. And then I allow you, after you have understood what I've heard, 
yeah. to become yourself in the oh, music. That's really And cool. I think because I've played with the same musicians for a very long time, we have developed that sound together. They now know I'll come and say, gang, 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 gang. And I'll tell the bass player, bum, ba, zam, bam, ba, dem, ba, da, bum, ba. and I'll tell the drummer, ka, tsika, do, ka, ka, tsika, do. and once we lock that, one, two, three rehearsals, I then say, guys, If I remember right, you just said Katsika. Katsika do ka. Is that a kind of a thing or is it uh, <laughs> you're like, just do it? Or, <laughs> no, I'll tell or you. Or is it something only you do? I'll, I'll tell you one thing. My my, my, my roots are jazz scatting. So I used to listen a lot to Afro jazz music oh, uh, wow. when I was in school. So that's where you hear the... And, and again, as a drummer, I had to sometimes, especially when you're playing for pop bands, you know, to, for you to remember yeah. jacks and stuff. Like that. You know, try to remember those breaks by yeah. singing them. Yes. So that has become part of me. And it's easier for me when I've got a drama either they are new or I'm, I'm not touring with the band it's easier to say and so a lot of our uh, followers are piano players right. uh, inevitably and songwriters and composers uh, a lot of people play the piano or play the drums play the guitar but with how, the way we are chatting you're using a lot of your voice to communicate thoughts and ideas to not only your band but also to yourself mm. to kind of internalize it and make it in your mind to be the next biggest thing mm -hmm. so how important do you think vocalizing an idea or singing an idea is and even if if you are coming to become a guitar player or a piano player is being able to sing also important in this industry well i really think that uh, well one of my mentors taught me this that whatever you can sing you can play oh. just like if you can walk you can dance <laughs> so uh, I, I, that became part of me again. And I'll tell you, whatever you can sing and becomes part of you, right. it's easy for you to transfer it to yeah. the next person or to the instrument. So yes, I agree that it's important that you try and put it in within you by singing it. Because there's something about singing something and something about talking something. You become engraved and inside of it and that's easy to to output i wouldn't kill guitar players that you should be able to be a professional singer you know for you to be able yeah. to but just being able to sing your chord actually helps you with your tuning uh because worst of all if you become professional all these things are being marked about oh. you you have to be able to be in tune you have to be able to play your instrument in tune so singing and singing along what you are playing it's a plus for you for so many of the ticks that the world is going to judge you when you get out there to be professional yes uh, there's a lot of music in the band room so you singing a part kind of also gives you that ownership i guess over the part totally that's totally. really cool and uh, how how is your general um, uh, jamming process do you jam or do you like uh, just do you come up with the ideas during a jam or do you kind of compose it and then bring it into into the jam session or is it all I'll tell you Jason it's always different for me um oh, wow. yes yes I'll tell you actually this new album three of the songs I composed them on stage on tour so wow. I started playing a, a, a progression yeah. I gave Ella the signal that follow me and I allowed everyone to play whatever they're feeling lucky enough we were recording that show so we're able to go back and take that so you're first. saying you compose something randomly on a oh sound. yes oh yes so are you saying that you know making music a lot of people think oh we need like an environment mm. we have to we have to be locked up in a room and we have to like meditate and think and get into the a zone do you think that happens or does music just kind of my friend I think that happens and the critical thing to every musician watching is find and know yourself the problem we are, yes. we have is identity yeah. As long as you don't know yourself, you're not going to know what's going to work for you. Mm -hmm. For Michael Jackson, you would stand in front of a mirror and see lyrics written on a mirror. For yeah. Blessing Chimanga, I don't need to be in a jam room. I don't need to be on the biggest stage. I can be, I'll tell you, there's one song I wrote in Pondicherry in front of the river. Just out of Pondicherry and looking at the river, I hear, It came just like that. Is that so, on the new album? It's, it's on the old album. It's on oh, the wow. Tosse album. So it's all about what works for you. Find yourself. If sitting in a room, uh, I've got a friend of mine that has to travel. Whenever they're oh. about to write a new album, they have to get out of Zimbabwe. They have to mm. go in a different space and they'll come back with 10 new tracks. Just like that. So for me, it's been different. Sometimes it's yes when we're in 
jamming. Uh, and guess what? You said this in another interview we had together. For me, I've written so many songs playing FIFA on PlayStation. Excellent. And they've come. <laughs> they've come just like that. And you're like, this is yeah. it. This is it. So it, yeah. I would say it's, a den- it's an identity issue. Find yourself. Yeah, so what you're saying is, and it, a lot of people are obsessed about an environment mm, to mm, write a song. Mm, mm. What you're saying is it can happen anywhere. Anywhere. And just wait for it. It'll yes. When it happens, you better kind of... Capture the moment. Capture the moment. Capture the moment. Like a photographer. Exactly. A, I've actually yeah. been told that one of these classical musicians, um, the one of the songs that you still play as a classical pianist, it was a mistake. Okay. Wow. And look at it now, <laughs> all over the world, and that person is dead by now, but the world is still playing and saying this is correct. Awesome. So capture the moment. Right. A uh, uh, pen. A very, very in, in important question, I think, for the viewers and for me to know, because mm. I think a vocalist in a band should also be an entertainer. The rest of us, like I'm in a band, I just play my keyboard, I move around, I dance, I smile, groove a little bit, but I don't do what you do, which is sing and be like an actor, like a theater person, and then you control the crowd. Of course, you play an instrument. So I'm trying to understand how do you do all these things? And the most important thing I would like out of this question would be, how do you grow or improve as an entertainer? More than a musician, a singer, a very good, you know, a marimba player. Yeah. You have your roots. But in your, when I watch you guys play, it's an entertainment act. It's like, I don't have to go to a movie today. I'll watch the Blessing Jamanga <laughs> group, you know. So you guys are really entertaining. God. So thank how do you do that? Thank you, Jason. Again, I'm going to refer this and, and, and quote my mentor, Oliver Mtukudzi, who said to me, you have to be the number one fan of your music. Um, you have to love what you're doing. So for me, whatever I'm doing on stage, it's not it's not animation that we have set in the practice room and said, you know what, at this point, I'm going to jump to the left. And we're not. No, 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 no. It's for me understanding the atmosphere that it's in the room and what I can do to make it even blowing. Our mindset and focus every time is we want, to have, we want people to have a memorable concert, a memorable time with us. Uh, so how do you improve yourself to become an entertainer? I'll just say, number one, enjoy what you're doing. For me, uh, there's actually a book I'm writing called The Law of Stage. And the third thing I've oh. written in that uh, point is enjoy. You know, when you enjoy what you're doing, it's, 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 it's easy for you to transfer to the people. And then number two, be confident. What yep. you're doing is correct. Yep. People have paid money to come and see that. Okay, yeah, so yeah. give them 150 and 1,000 percent of confidence. They are going to love you for it. And of course, the jumping and playing at the same time, it has taken time to find myself, yeah. you know, to say, okay, this works. Certain things doesn't work. It's not every marimba player that's going to sk- jump the marimbas like what I do, but there's still good marimba players. So this is yeah. me. Uh, this is me just on stage showing that I love what I'm doing. I can, yeah. on this whole stage, I can jump around and blah, blah, blah. Uh, so I, I hope you got me. Uh, it, for you to be to improve your entertainment side of the music, and it's very important. No one wants to come to a show where you're just looking sad. We have paid money. Hey, 2,000 rupees to watch you just be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. wake up, show me confidence. And we'll love you for it. Yeah. And how do you tune off just before you play a show? Like at the backstage, Mm. you've done so many things. There's social media, there's this, there's that, there's deadlines. You have to get food after the show and all these things. And then your show is in 10 minutes. Mm. So is there something you do or how do you get wound up for that gig? Ha, huh, that's I'm a very sure that's a very tough. difficult question, Jason, because you have just nailed exactly what happens. You know, for yeah. me, I've not had a manager in the longest time. Actually, most of my career. So you are thinking about yeah, the I'm boys. I'm asking that because I think you you manage the group. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, which exactly. Is another. <laughs> um, uh, for me, I think I I take myself to my first time when I told myself I'm about to do this. That's yeah. that that thought line always come back to me that I have to perform this show like the last one just in case tomorrow I won't be able to perform again. There's no ritual that I do. I don't do this whole quiet moment for myself or whatever. Yes, as a routine and a tradition for me and the band, because we are all Christians, we hold our hands and we pray. That's only other thing that we do. But besides that, that mindset always comes back that even if there's one person, maybe that person is in the committee of a Grammy Award for me to win it. So I have to deliver no matter what, no matter where, no matter number of people, no matter what. Of course. Yeah. Yes. Great. I just have one uh, one or two final questions, which would be, 
tell us a bit about your upcoming album i think the album is out yeah, it's it's, out. it's available for download mm. or uh, streaming or purchase on the internet i'm yeah. sure so you could just tell us a bit about it the music in general who you've collaborated with if any and uh, yeah so this third new album of mine is called simply me and with simply me i was just trying to really bring out the me so we uh, we the first two albums are studio recorded but this one is my live project we we went all out for a live concert really made sure everything was on point and we recorded the album live wow. because so many people would always say that they only find me in a live gig and we wanted to transfer that so that 20 years from now there's something for the next generation to watch or to listen to uh, on this album we also went crazy we didn't sit only in the normal african vibes african oh. rhythms okay. i actually have a rock song on this album wow. i actually have a reggae song on this album and then the other six are really my typical me but i've added a bonus track which is a tip just a marimba song no vocals no other instruments it's just uh, marimba marimba wow. multiple marimba How so do we hear this So it's available online as we speak okay. it's on iTunes it's on Spotify, Spotify. and uh, I'm so glad that we have we've started the Simply Me World Tour we are hoping to reach 10 nations physically wow. with the album and hopefully yeah hopefully you make some revenue out of it considering oh, oh, yes. CDs and all that yes. are yes. do you have like merch or those sort of things uh unfortunately for this start of the tour we have not uh, because we really were testing waters and trying to see but Perfect. so far just the shows we have done in india the interest is high the message is good because all i'm saying in this album is be proud of who you are you are fine as you are as indian as you are you okay and for those of you who missed that he said he's recorded this album live mm. that is not easy mm, <laughs> that, mm, so mm. i mean we can talk about that in a in a later interview i'm sure but wow doing a live studio what do we call this live studio album yeah <laughs> because it's there to download yes yes wow. yes yes must have been tough you yeah, it was definitely crazy. give us some tips plus post post production on top of that oh wow so it was was special but in- it was a good experience awesome and it's it's great to see uh, how how you've come out of the the covid situation mm. and in india we've had a lot of musicians kind of remo- just getting out of music just doing something else in india i guess we have options we can do a day job or we have other things i don't know how it is for you but it's great first of all you know uh, kudos to your band and Thank congratulations you. for doing so much work Thank you. considering it's this really ridiculously tough time yeah, yeah. not only to just be stay healthy it's really tough for a musician to do anything you can yeah. gig you can make money our revenue comes from playing in front of people yeah. we couldn't yeah. do that for so long yeah. Yeah. so it's great that you came out of it so uh, <clears throat> again guys this is blessing chimanga from and his band will be available on youtube and there are videos there's and uh, make sure you purchase simply, uh, simply simply me sorry simply me on all the streaming platforms don't just go and stream it there'll be an option to purchase it as well so make sure you purchase it and then head over to his channel give it a like give it a subscribe for sure and uh, there'll be a lot of content coming out from his channel as well stay tuned we have a few lessons also done by blessing himself and his team they've talked about some uh, really cool musical concepts a lot of creative stuff a lot of refreshing stuff uh, subscribe to our channel as well yeah. if you've w- watched this video for so long i'm sure you have to do it like now uh, do it and uh, yeah there we go yeah <laughs> so i wish blessing all the best any final words for your fans or for any upcoming musicians who are in this scene we call music yeah man thank you jason uh, what a pleasure what a time thank you for this and to everybody watching i just want to say keep on keeping on keep on going don't give up we have just come out of the worst moment and it's now time to recover music is healing music is for the people bring it on no matter where you come from who you are what genre bring that music and guys this guy is a legend <laughs> thanks so much dude thanks brother take care all the best and catch you very soon thank you all the best safe travels god bless thank you yes. man